Hey everyone, welcome back to another video of Ant World Plays. Today we are playing America's Most Illegible Book 3. Now, if you know, in case y'all wondering if I'm doing High School Story Class Act Book 3, we're doing that on Monday. We're doing that on Monday, and um, what else? We'll try to, we'll do that, we'll try to do that on Monday, so. I'm just taking it easy today. And I have work this weekend, so. Yeah. So I'm a next week you guys are gonna see like some videos before the end of the year. So yeah. Let's get this started. Your wedding is just around the corner. Almost. But when your fiance pops the question for a second time, will your answer rock the boat? Yeah, um, she said she wants to get married in Vegas. Hmm. That is a tough decision, even though we're going to be married soon. Chapter 12, Pins and Needles. <clears throat> After returning to the hotel from your bachelor party, you're stunned by the revelation that Mackenzie wants to swim in love. Do you want to get married tonight? Why not? Vegas is the perfect place to profess our love without the hassle of of a big wedding. Besides, we may be, we may be dominating the challenges, but you said yourself that all of this was overwhelming. Well, yeah, but is winning the perfect wedding worth all the stress we're putting ourselves through to get it? The kids, this is all happening so fast. If you could just slow down for a second, he takes you by the shoulders and looks deeply into your eyes. Anthony, I want to be married to you, and I don't want to wait in another minute. Marry me, now, tonight. What do you say? If we, if we get married tonight, we'll let everyone down. Our friends, our fans, the crew. I know that, but shouldn't our special day be about us? Of course! But we signed a contract. Besides, think about it. What will this do to the AME ratings? Are we really ready to ride off into the sunset and leave everyone else in the lurch? As he sits up in bed, and does a happy sight as she runs a hand over her weary face. Of course not. Oh, you place a gentle hand on Mackenzie's shoulder. I know this special hasn't been easy on you. But we can't get married now. These are the wearing of our dreams. After everything we've been through this past year, we deserve to kick off our happily ever after right in the right way. And that includes our parents and friends who loved and support us this whole time. They have, they have all been looking forward to the ceremony, and I do not want to be the one to tell them that they missed it. I'm sorry, Mackenzie, but I just can't elope with you. Okay, I get it. No elopement. Then you and Mackenzie get back, settled back, get settled back into bed. All the happiness from the evening's events is long gone. You would. You wait for her to wrap your, her arms around you, pulling you back into the warmth of her embrace. But instead, she turns back, and you, she, she back to you, and clicks off the bedside, well, you, leaving you alone with your thoughts. The next day, after many hours of traveling, Bren drives the set van through the iron gates of the Amy estate. Home sweet home. Or as close to it as we're going to get. Ren pulls, 
one puts the van in park and one by one your castmates climb out to grab their luggage you hurry out you hurry, you hurry after Mackenzie eager to catch her arm as the rest of the cast heads inside hey now that we're back I thought maybe we could now isn't the best time I think if I'm being honest last night kind of threw me off threw me for a loop you catch her gaze, and just for a second, you see a flash of pain in her eyes. Quickly, she looks away. Mackenzie, you have your reason why why you didn't want to elope, and I respect that. But I just really fixes on grabbing her bag from the van, slamming the the inside against the concrete. Concrete. And we're finally meeting your eye again. I need a moment to process everything. Alone. You start to speak, but Mackenzie doesn't wait. Suddenly, you watch as she starts toward the cars without looking back once. Well, that didn't sound good. You looked up to find Bianca looking back and forth between you and Mackenzie, retreating figure. How much did you hear? Enough to be officially worried? Jen, Adam, and Derek said you two have barely spoken since Vegas. What's going on? Your eyes find your feet on the abs driveway and you kick a stray stone as you find as you fight back against the tightness building in your chest. You and I haven't been seeing our eye recently. But I have no idea how far off we were uh, we were until last night. Because he asked me to elope with her in Vegas. What? You didn't do it? You didn't do it, did you? I didn't think it was good it was a good idea. I can tell Mackenzie is disappointed, but when I tried to talk to her about it, she brushed me off. Uh no to a question like that can definitely change things. No wonder you two are so out of it. On sec one second we were great, and the next I just don't know how we got here. Well, one thing's for sure, the last thing we need is Vince and Ivy seeing you like this. Come on. You and Bianca leave your luggage in the mansion's foyer, and the two of you head up the stairs to the roof. The sun hovers in the sky, and you watch from the railings as the city below carries on without a care in the world about your dilemma. It's almost like nothing has changed, even though it feels like everything has. There are two th things in life you can always you can always count on. One is that one is that the world will keep spinning even as your as yours caving in around you. What's the other? Me. We've known each other for a long time, babes. I can't imagine not being here for whatever you need. And that goes triple for us. <coughs> you look over your shoulder to find Eden, Slater, Han, and Kiana climbing up the stairs and through the doorway. The steel door slams behind them with a, met with a metallic clank, and they circle you in a group hug. Thanks, you guys. All I need is some saw device. There are so many reasons we, why we shouldn't elope. I feel like I did the right thing. But if I did, why do I feel so crappy? I'm no relationship guru, but if there's one thing I know about love, it's that it only works if you're both thinking of the other person. If you really love Mackenzie, you both have to be just as committed. Sorry, something popped up to meeting the other's needs as you are or to meeting your own and if you f and if you're feeling crappy about things how things turned out I'm guessing that last part is where everything went wrong Mackenzie's been struggling with the idea of getting married on set and I want to think about her needs but what about everything else 
Bianca guides you over to the patio table and you sigh as you sink into the cushions. Hold on a second. Things were so much easier when when Mackenzie and I first met. That is true. Of course they were. The expectations were lower. You had butterflies in your stomach. Things were spontaneous and unpredictable and fun. Bianca gives you a look. The emotion in the gaze warms your skin, leaving you feeling exposed until finally you look away. Now everything's changed. You're getting married. You say it like it's a bad thing. It's a matter of perspective. I just wish we... could skip ahead to happier times. The wedding is only a few weeks away, but with all the, dr with all the drama, it feels like years. I wish there was some way to tap into those happy feelings now. Yeah, I contemplate your words for a moment, then leans across the table toward you. When did you know Mackenzie was the one for you? Because he had a special place in my heart from the moment I met her. And let's try to get the magic back. A little reminiscing might do you some good. Besides, if you walk us through your relationship, you might may just get some clarity. It would be nice to shine a little light on this situation. Ah, uh, memory lane. But if we're going to do this, we have to go back to where it all began. Lead on. <coughs> I'm glad you asked. Take your rain party into the kitchen and breathe in the alcohol tank of freshly poured whiskey. This is where it all started. I met Mackenzie right here during the signature cocktail challenge. Knowing Mackenzie, I bet she did her best to leave a bitter taste in your mouth. Wait, Mackenzie was like that to you guys? When we met, I thought she didn't like me. <laughs> it's not you. The first week of Season 10, she refused to stand next to me. She said could she said she said she could feel me getting dumb jack jack on her. She definitely has a funny way of introducing herself. You stand in the kitchen and, gri and gape at the a the available cocktail ingredients. Ah, uh, well, at least I know I want uh, to want to add a cherry cherry on top. You reach for the lit for the jar of the mar something cherries, struggling to lift the lid. Why? Oh, open. Just then, the jar is whisked out of your hands. You look up at the contestant who sold the cherries and see a beautiful woman opening the jar with ease. She pops a cherry in her mouth and leaves the open jar on the counter. What? <laughs> that, just her speaking that word. What? What? Mackenzie is never m more unbothered than when she's competing, except maybe when she's eating. You don't have to tell us we've seen her do both. She can be ruthless. For all of her confidence and bravado, her bite is just as strong as her bark. When we met, I couldn't take my eyes off of her. Off of her. She was clearly the most beautiful woman in the room. But she's so much more than a pretty face. She could coast through life on her looks. But she's the hardest worker I've ever met. 
whether it's a, whether it's law school, AME, or taking care of a family, because he doesn't shy away from a challenge. It's how I know she'll always have my back, no matter what. I'd say that's a pretty strong foundation to build your love on. One thing's for sure. If I had to do it all over again, Here's the thing, our love story may not be perfect, but it's ours, and every bump in the road has only made us stronger. And here's we are going to finish this special the way we came into it, together. How your love story started may have been beyond your control, but the rest is up, this is up to you to make that, to make the best choices you can. Developing wasn't the right choice for either of us. It was just a means to an end. So if that wouldn't have, have helped, maybe you two should sit down and figure what will. You're right. Thanks for staying. I was sitting behind I had to help me pick the pieces with you guys. Look, I know this is something you should usually turn to Jen or Adam for, but we all care about you, Anthony. Especially me. Right back at you. Now, I need to find Mackenzie. Spend all night making up. We both got some serious apologies on you. A guy after my own heart. Later, he turned down the hallway into the into the mansion and almost slammed right into Mackenzie. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. She trails off, and you look up, meeting her eye for the first time since this morning. I was hoping we could talk. I'm all ears. Not here. You never know who's listening. Come on. You grab Mackenzie hand and lead her out to the balcony just over the ledge the water hits the shore again and again you take a deep breath of the salty air as you gather your nerves to speak you know we could just go back to the house I thought about everything and you don't need an apology no Sorry I disappointed you. I'm sorry I disappointed you. I got caught up in everything that's riding on the show and I didn't really listen to what you had to say. You deserve better. And I promise from here on out, I'll give it to you. Thanks, Anthony, but now I think it's my turn. I should never have put so much pressure on you. It was just getting to be so much, all the prizes, the fans, Ivy and Vince, Omar and Piper, Omar, Piper. It's a lot for anyone to deal with, and I don't want you to be unhappy. So if that means that we quit the show, I don't want to quit. I want all of this to be worth it. I want to win, but most of all, as he takes your face in your hands and you melt into the warmth of her palms. I want to be your wife. All the other details may be up in the air, but, th but that's non-negotiable. You drive a hard bargain, but I accept your terms. We might, we have to seal the deal somehow, right? I like how you do business. <laughs> As you just crash into your passionate, the crash into yours passionately, her every moment expressing urgency, her hand skins your body, and her fingers take their time, grazing your chest, your hips, and your backside. Mm. You slip your tongue into her mouth. Okay. Tangling it yeah, with Mackenzie's as the fire in the pit of your stomach burns brighter before pulling away. You catch sight of Mackenzie's eyes. Low, hungry, and desperate. Just like this is going, 
we still have one problem. If we want to win the whole thing, our wedding is going to have to be the most glamorous thing reality TV's ever seen. That's worlds away from the loving, more genuine wedding you're hoping for. You have a point. But it's not like we can... We can get married in secret. We passed up the chance in Vegas, and thanks to the to last season's art walk, sneaking out of the mansion is like breaking out of prison. These days, I don't, I don't know who's harder to avoid, security or the paparazzi. We're going to have to compromise and sacrifice, but spending the day without you made me realize I'd do anything to spend my life with you. Oh, Mackenzie. Throw your arms around her, squeezing until she chuckles. But that's only if you don't suffocate me first. No, if you don't suffocate me first. <clears throat> you start to reply when you hear loud, angry voices. You still and listen until you realize the sounds are coming from beneath you. Silently, you and Mackenzie creep the edge to get a better view. I'm guessing... Honestly, I'll be glad when we get one of them down down the aisle, so I can get back to my back to my happy place. This mansion is stressful. One of them, ha! <laughs> we all know who the winners should be. It's not enough for us to know it; they have to prove it by earning the votes from us and the viewers. It's the judges. What do we do? It doesn't seem like. They know we're here. Let's listen in. Who does he think he is, anyway? Ivy's doing her best, but production is carrying their, carrying their half of the show. He's making that poor, poor girl a choke on national television. I'm surprised the fans haven't caught on yet. They're talking about Vince, and and they are not fans. Judges don't even know all the half of it. If they hate him this much now, imagine how they'll feel, you know, you know, in a cast, in a cast made shoes. Then why don't we, why don't, then why don't we tell him? Vince has been getting away with murder, and if we stoke, build the fire enough, the judges might help us take him down. Hmm. We do have pre some pretty solid dirt. I'm trying. I hope they like their tea pippin hot. Come on. You and Mackenzie hurried downstairs and out onto the patio to find the judges re reclined into the prop chairs. As soon as they notice your presence, they fall silent. No need, no need to stop gossiping on your, our account. We already caught well, most of the performance from our skybox anyway. Yenzi points up to the balcony and Penny's face goes beet red. We weren't gossiping, we were just uh, talking about Vince behind his back. Even I know this in English, that is the same thing. Don't get us wrong, Anthony. We're as committed to giving Vince a fair shot as anyone. But he's a garbage person. Hey, you're pre hey, you're preaching to the choir. We were just wondering if you guys wanted to know what's going on behind the scenes. The judges shoot glances among themselves until finally Payne leans in. That depends. What do you have to share? Hmm. No, I'm not Vince Pond, no. Screwing with Sierra. I'm pretty sure that will happen. Everybody will figure that out by the end of the book. So, selling secrets, 
selling secrets to f Mackenzie and I followed and I followed Vince and his reporter contact while he sung like a canary. When I sung, I made him talking. He told the he told the Paps that Mackenzie and I secretly hate each other, and they, and then they, and then took a massive payout. Is that how you knew Vince was up to no good? That and the fact that he's Vince. Oh, he keeps going. This is toys. Oh, we know. Speak for yourself. For how long? As far as we can tell, they've been <laughs> banging it out since the, before the special started. Yeah, that's been going on a while. And that's probably where dis where he disappeared to when no one could find him in Vegas. So while Ivy was crying about Vince being lost, Sierra had found him. Over and over again, I'm sure. Just to his feet. That does it. Do you, do you have any idea how long it took me to find a florist that Florestal was also a jeweler. Uh, no. I guess about twice, twice, as it took Vince to track down Pal's pawn, pawn shop, shop, pawns and Pal's welcome. And he, he and the pawnbroker did some seem pretty friendly. What type of monster would do something like that? It's Vince for crying out loud. He is. Easily the most arrogant man I've ever met in my life. And coming from you, that means coming something. Carson smiles conspicuously. Now I'm the one to spread rumors, but I heard he only perms his hair to disguise a certain unfortunate haircut. Fatima got so fed with his antics she hacked a chunk of chunk off and and it hasn't grown back. Remind me not to get on Fatima's bad side. Even still, I think Ivy may really be falling for him. Even though he's treating her like her like garbage, I know gossip isn't nice, but Vince is making a mockery of the one thing I I've devoted my life to preserving. True love. And that's what we're doing. Also he also he's also kinda intense. Like, asked, like he asked me what day, is, day it was, and I said hump day, and he didn't even giggle. Above all else, he's just plain tacky. Don't forget Vince is also a Ruta Ren. No one should have to work, have to be, be demeaned at work. I mean, Ryan, really? They've been with AME a whole season already. There's bad with there's bad with names and then there's willing willful great endurance. They just look at each other silently for a moment, as if coming to an agreement. Then Lancelin nods and Carson leans toward you and lowers his voice. Didn't hear this from me, but for the final challenge next week, prepare to talk up your wedding plans. We'll do all we can to can on our end, but you have to make America fall in love with your vision. Thanks, but why are you telling us this? Simple, Vince cannot win. We're counting on you two. Then we'll do our best. Carson sits back in his chair, his face bright for the first time all evening. Good, now that's... Oh, uh, that's settled. Who's up for a game of gin? No one, person. No one. The next morning... Mm, see? Mahanzi is in, is in hair and makeup. You're enjoying a cup of coffee on your front porch. Ah, what a gorgeous day. 
Too bad we'll be cooped up in the mansion for most of it. You crane, you crane your neck to see Bianca walking toward you, wearing a bright smile. Um, what are you doing here? I'm not disturbing you, am I? You're gonna ruin my ride. I'm warning you, I take my morning meditation very seriously. I think you've been spending too much time around Tegan. Bianca smiles softly, but you can see she's fidgety. So, uh, how'd it go with Mackenzie last night? Pretty great, actually. We managed to put the whole thing in roll elopement thing behind us. To be honest, I couldn't have done it without you. Our talk on the roof really helped get my head straight. That's great, really. I'm glad to hear it. You don't sound glad. You flashed a teasing smile. Oh, I get it. You hoped we wouldn't make up. You want Mackenzie all to yourself. Let's see what's happening here. You were hoping you could snatch up Mackenzie after we broke up. That's... Well, forget about it. Everything's smooth sailing between us now. It's that you don't understand. It's you I have feelings for. Ah, oh, crap. Like in the last book, you will have consequences. Oh, jeez. You stare at Bianca in shock, your mind racing as silent looms between you. How long have you felt this way? If I'm being honest, on and off for the past two seasons of AMA, I thought it was just a crush, but then so much time passed. I couldn't shake it. When you got together with Mackenzie, I tried to put on, put you out of my mind, but the show kept bringing us together. Why are you telling me this now? I'm with Mackenzie. Our wedding is in a few weeks. I tried to put it behind me, but then you kissed me in Vegas. And since our talk yesterday, I've had the worst feeling in my stomach. I know if I didn't tell you, I'd regret it for the rest of my life. I'm completely selfish, and I'm sorry. But the truth is, I love you, Anthony Williams. Even if, even if I know you'll never feel the same way. I love Mackenzie. Our, our relationship is more than just a sh the show. It's real, and I want to spend the rest of my life with her. I know. I'm sorry. I know that's not what you wanted to hear. You don't have to apologize or anything. I always figured this is how things would go down. But I couldn't live with not knowing. Now that it's off my chest, who knows? Maybe I can finally move on. You can. You will. I care about you, Hanka, and I want you to be happy, happy more than anything. Hanka smiles sadly. Of course not, because I'm... Well, we'll both be happy in the end. That's, real, that's really all that matters. The anger turns to leave his appearance in the morning, and leaving you alone as, you, as your thoughts race. Who knew being most illegible could be a gift and a curse. Later. You, Mackenzie, and your castmates gather in the mansion's foyer for the week's challenge. Your eyes swept the room and you catch Bianca's gaze. Anthony, uh, hey. Uh, I really hope things won't be awkward between us. <sighs> Carson and the Jesus stand waiting for you between the staircases. A mess of fabrics and suing up and suing supply mess. Um, what's in Fatima's worst nightmare? What in Fatima's worst nightmare is going on here? Looks like every button and piece of scrap fabric that ever existed took up residence. I thought you all lived like animals before, but this is unacceptable. Hey, don't look at us. It was fine an hour ago. Ivy continues her rant and such as and reaches to snatch up the red scarf draped across the banister. When Carson quickly stops her, his hand brushes her 
and she jerks back, suddenly red-faced. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Omar is on a warpath about continually between shots. Is he? Or are you just on the hunt for an excuse to touch my wife? We're not married yet. Yet. Uh, semantics sound like an excuse to me. The room interrupts in voices as members of both wedding parties weigh in. Clearly, Carson was trying to help. Omar can be really picky just because it's reality TV doesn't mean every little thing has to see on the list. Thank you. Earlier, I just I adjusted my tie and the vein in Omar's neck popped out. Uh, I'm honestly just concerned about his health. High blood pressure aside, I'm not buying it. Between my ex and my kids, I'm gonna sniff out a lie with a hundred yards. Oh come on, I know I know cheating when I see it. That wasn't it. Quiet on set. Omar's bellowing call resonates around the marble room, shocking both sides as into silence as you turn to see him and Ren standing at the foyer entrance. Today is not the today is not the day, people. We lost a day of filming due to travel and time is money, so save the big ring and hit hit your marks now. <laughs> That's a little harsh, don't you think? Sorry guys, but Omar's right. We need to get in and, out and get out if we want this special to stay on budget. Everything has to be on budget. Then why on earth should I care about that? Aren't you the showrunner? Let me put it there like this. No budget, no winning. Proceed. Thank you. So nice of you to let me do my job. Action. Yeah, shoot. Today on AME's he's most today on America's most eligible wedding edition, we're back in Miami and the competition is heating up. Our couples have secured their rides and sowed their wild oats. But can they design an outfit worthy of wedding bells? Or will they commit the biggest fashion f past this social season? I'm sorry. What? Why not just hand us the win, Carson? I have passion for fashion since my first Valentino bit. Which I'm guessing you only recently outgrew. Sorry, Junior. This challenge is ours. We'll see about that. This season we focus on the most expensive clothing, but it's important to recognize everyone has a different budget, so. Scatter around, lesbians as will find the find thrift items. You must use them, them to design and sew. Okay, this is probably something important. Use them to design. And a staple of the wedding industry. A stunning wedding dress. Wait, that's what all this was about? Everything deserves a second chance. Let's take this stuff and grab a tab. Let it when you look on the bright side. Win this challenge, and your wedding attire will be featured in Hitched, the nation's most popular wedding magazine. But lose, and it's back to taking selfies. Any questions? Repeat them again. Design and sew. 
So you either address using thrift items around the room. Okay. I'm using. I don't care. Your 15 minutes starts now. <laughs> the foyer explodes into a flurry of action as Vincent, as Ivy and Vincent's wedding party begin to collect random scraps of fabric. You and Mackenzie call your team into a huddle. Before we start gathering anything, we should come up with a game plan. Part of the challenge is having a great design, so we've got to make something in that one to just socks off. And you've come to the right, right girl. My birdcage hoop skirt is still the talk of the country club. If I can get our hands on the right stuff, I personally guarantee you, you a look for the ages. Then what are we waiting for? Let's go for it. I don't, I don't want to step on any toes. After all, Anthony McKenzie's wedding photo shoot is at stake. What do you think? Okay. Edie, fashion is your life. Maybe Grace has turned down the help from the style icon. Stop, I'm blushing. What do you need? The dress, dress will have three main parts. The bodice, the skirt, and the accent piece to tie it all together. You guys find me, find me, you guys find find me something I can use for those three things, and we're home free. Bullet skirt and an accent piece. You're the lady, and time's ticking. Let's find that stuff. On it. Your, we your wedding party scares to. Your wedding party scatters to score the room, and you and you rush to Jen's side as she comes through piles of lingerie. Uh, you scoop up a lacy gutter and dangle it from your finger. Our mannequin doesn't have legs, so I'm guessing she won't need too much of this stuff. No, but I'm hoping Eden will be able to use one of these bras to give. Of our girl, a unique and bodice. You shift through the underwear until you find something that catches your eye. What about a. Okay, it's coming up. A bodice, skirt, or an ancient piece. Silhouette, and it looks like it was pretty glamorous once upon a time. Good eye, Anthony. You keep looking, I'll get this back to Eden. Got the bodice. You got it. As Jen runs, runs the pussy over to the mannequin, you abandon the lingerie and look over her to find Derek surrounded by sheets and furniture dressing. What are you trying to find there? Something long, long sweeping enough to be the dress's skirt, but everything's so mixed up. You dig through the mess until you find something long at the bottom of the pail. I think I got something. The tug you reveal a scarf ain't gonna do anything. Maybe some curtains. Boxes that have been perched on top of the fabric over the room. 
fabric tumble over and then across the room you watch as the material glides across whoa jackpot how is a scarf going to become a skirt that would be a tiny skirt <laughs> I'll say if that's not long enough I'll know what it is I'll run over to Eden now we go to the X and peace Derek sets off and your eyes scan over the available materials falling on on an open unopened box marked brick next to Mackenzie. What's in there? Only one way to find out. She pops the tape up exposing the items inside. You dig in your hands. You even said we need an accent piece to tie to tie the look together. What about color just screams look at me we can literally tie it around the waist of the dress looks like we have a bunding designer after all I'm a man of many talents come on Eden needs this neither you take the fragment back to Eden who's busy throwing stitch after stitch as the design slowly starts to take shape one accent piece Right on time. This is too slow, but by myself. I'm gonna grab my needle. We need to. Look, we need, need all the help we can get. But we don't sue. It's easy. Bring the needle through the fragment and then back. Hold on. I'm always going to write this down because I always forget. Needle through the frag. Bring the needle through the fragment from the back. You gather the fabric with one hand and the needle in and the thread in the other. You gather the needle through the fragment, feeling carefully. Made with nimble fingers, you leave beyond straight and even stitches. Nice job, Anthony. You're like an old pro. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. <laughs> Come on, guys. We don't have much time. Your team begins to sew as a unit, stitching the fabric together and building the shape of the garment. Almost done. And time. Let's see what you've come up with. Both wedding parties gather around their mannequins and prepare to present their dresses. Team Anthony McKenzie, you're up first. You smile at Eden and step forward to reveal. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. Please tell me she's wearing this to her wedding party. Your team's wedding dress. It wasn't easy. But our team made it look like it was. Beautiful. Misty just looking at it. And the herringbone snitched as fantiques. The destique. As the judges ooh and ah, you invite Eden to come forward. This is actually an Eden label original. She handled all the design work. Please, designing in passion. I haven't, I haven't worked it a day in my life. Something as as sweet as this must have for the name. You look to Eden, but she shakes her head.
it may have been my design but but you brought it to life life you should name it in that case we're gonna pick a random name the phoenix that sounds perfect to me hello what about our dress Anthony because we aren't the only ones who've been busy of course, please present, uh, present your artwork. Let's see yours. I use this word and gestures to a plainly stitched wedding dress at the mannequin's head. It is a flowing veil streaked with mud. You reach forward to touch it. Uh. But idly quickly swats your hand away. With a quickly dry cleaning, it'll be good as new. Anthelyn and the other judges step forward to examine their work, eyes closing in on every year. Madhu, what have you done? His, his eyes well in tears as Karis is the filthy chiffon. No one should see her like this. We just we just used the materials you gave us. It's not, it's not our fault that half of this stuff on this stuff is on its last legs but you did decide to present it as your final piece knowing that we were looking for something positive soon worthy what message are we sending the people who shop thrift because of that the f and the phoenix elegance design team anthony mckenzie team anthony mckenzie is this week's challenge winners we did it and we just got to keep this up for a couple more weeks and this wedding is ours and your wedding will look your wedding look will be on the cover of Hitched what the big win how did you pull it off you catch the side of Omar on the sideline whining with space between his hands motioning for you to go big there we stitched and they'll hold tight until the end of time, just like us. I just hope our outfits are that well made. We don't need any wardrobe malfunctions. I don't care whether we're in formal wear or not. Or are we. Whatever we wear for the ceremony, it has to look incredible. And it has to be white. Or black and white. It has to look incredible. The whole country's going to have their eyes on us. I think I know just how to make perfect impression. Strap in everyone, because we're going tuck shopping. Huh? Tuck sh uh, we're gonna, we're, it's time to be lambed up, but will you look, will your look make everyone speak for your praises, speak your praises, or forever hold their peace? Hope you guys, well, it's a tux. I'm pretty sure it's just a black tux. I'm gonna tell you guys what my dream wedding is will be. I think I said it. I think I said it before this started. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share, with your, share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you'd like to notify of all the videos I put up on my channel, go hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video. And like I said, we're doing High School Story next week. See ya well, on Monday. Bye.